And now, Improv Boston present. So that happened, a talk show. Nice guest, Katie Shepherd for the Boston Breakers. And musical guest, Ray O'Hara. With correspondent, Connor Allen, Quinn James, and Christina Parr. Interviewed by David Thomas, Rachel Anderman, and Francesca Bella. With the James Lindsay and the James Lindsay and I. Now, welcome to the stage, your host, Sam Mike. You didn't bring sticks? I'm sorry, I had to sell my drumsticks to a pawn shop to eat this week, Sam. I apologize. <laughs> and I just want to get this out front. This is a borrowed, borrowed outfit. You didn't have to tell everyone. I can't afford nice clothes. <laughs> sorry, Sam, I feel like I'm already screwing up the show. If you didn't say anything, it would have been fine. <laughs> sorry, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know how to do the whole sidekick thing. I apologize. I borrowed this from a funeral parlor because I <laughs> You borrowed that from a funeral parlor? Because I live down the street from a funeral parlor and I don't have any nice clothes and so I thought that I could stop in and get some nice clothes and they let me borrow it. Wait, did you borrow that from somebody at the funeral parlor or did you borrow that off of Not somebody? a dead person. One of the people that worked there had a spare outfit sitting around. Oh, okay, because <laughs> I was getting really worried that you bought no. out from a dead person. I'm not a parasite, Sam. I'm not a parasite. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they call I'm pretty sure they, I don't think they call it a parasite, someone who steals clothes from a dead person. I meant it more metaphorically, but uh, I don't do that kind of thing. All right, well, I appreciate you being here, Gil. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> Thank you for coming out. And you know what, folks? Uh, this is the first show that we've done in September. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to talk about uh, the fall and the beginnings of the fall uh, and, and what fall means to me. To me, fall is a, a look back on what you've done this whole year, you know? And it's kind of like a look at what's going to happen for the rest of the year. Uh, like, for instance, I, like many of you, uh, was a huge fan of the show True Detective. Anybody else here a fan of that show? Yeah. All three of you? That's good. <laughs> I, uh, I love True Detective. I love True Detective. And I just found out, did you know who they've cast as the new uh, leads in the next season of True Detective? I think so. Um, Vince Vaughn and John Stamos, right? I was looking at my neighbor's Entertainment Weekly. I thought that's what that I saw that. Colin Farrell and Vince Vaughn. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, television I, was stolen during a break-in six months ago, so I don't I can't follow. Uh, you stole your television? I know someone stole my television. Someone stole your television? Yeah, during a break-in. <laughs> I like Claire Danes. I think she's. I think she's <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Sam. Go ahead. Homeland. There's a show she's on. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I haven't seen her on a show. I was just, uh, <laughs> different movies that she was in and the, the show, the one show where she was 12 and then she did drugs. My so-called life? Yes, yes. I like the episode where she has the choice to do drugs and then she doesn't. I think that's important. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what I was thinking about with True Detective? I was thinking about how uh, great it is that Vince Vaughn is, is now in the new True Detective, you know? Mm -hmm. I always liked Vince Vaughn. You know why I like Vince Vaughn so much? Why? Because Vince Vaughn, every actor works like their ass off to be like that person, right? They mm -hmm. change to be the character or whatever. Vince Vaughn makes the same amount of money as every other actor and he does way less work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like Johnny Depp or Daniel Day Lewis, they sign on to a role. They have to become that person. Like, Danny, like Johnny Depp has to become a pirate. You know what I mean? 
Vince Vaughn signs onto a role. His biggest dilemma is like, oh, where where is my T-shirt going? What color T-shirt am I wearing? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like that's all he worries about. Vince Vaughn signs onto a role. He looks himself in the mirror and he goes, you know what? I'm a Peter. I could play a Peter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like that's his biggest issue. Yeah. That's why I've always liked Vince Vaughn. Yeah. I like in that movie Swingers when he walks up to that girl at the bar and he goes, Swingers. Then he takes her home. I thought that was a good part of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> that, are you, have you seen Swingers? I mean, it was a while back, but I think I remember that scene, though. It's pretty, <laughs> it pretty good with the ladies. In that Yo, movie. tell me, what are your, what are your, what are your uh, favorite movies? Oh, come on. Are you serious? <laughs> why, why are you acting like that was like a very personal question? No, I just I love movies. I mean, top three it would be... Uh, uh, Return of the Jedi, Empire yeah. Strikes Back, and then a movie uh, not a lot of people have probably heard of, but it stars Sylvester Stallone as an arm wrestling champion in the yeah. 80s. It's called Over the Top. Yeah, some people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's a great scene in the movie where he's arm wrestling a guy, and then he, he beats the guy, and he goes, champion! Okay, and then, my, he, then my he gets custody of his kid. <laughs> By describing more of the movie, did it make me appreciate the movie more? It did not. Did when it? I get my TV, you can come over and watch it. When I get my TV back. When are you gonna, how are you going to get your TV back? Do you know who took it? No, but with the detect as soon as the detectives figure out who did it, I'll get it back. How many detectives are working on the case? I've spoken to one gentleman so far. <laughs> Were you sure he was a detective? Well, he's no Vince Vaughn, but he definitely, you know. <laughs> he wasn't a true detective. Yeah, well, yeah. Did you guys see what I did there? <laughs> guys, we have Mayo Era here. Mayo Era, how you doing? <laughs> Gil, have you ever played an instrument before? Uh, I played an acoustic guitar in high school. But then I had to stop because my hand was broken in a in a moped accident, so I can't I couldn't play after that. In a moped accident. I, I was on a moped and I hit a pothole and I don't that's about all I want to say about it. <laughs> Why are you wearing that hat? It's because you said that we were gonna talk about fall. So this is like you know, it sort of uh, makes me think about the fall time. A blue Christmas hat makes you think about the fall? This is, this is something that you might wear if you were going to go apple picking. And you knew it was going to get chilly later. A lot of times when you go apple picking, at the start of the day it's warm and you don't need a hat, but you should always have something because once the sun goes down, uh, you know, mid-September on, then the temperature drops dramatically so you can stay comfortable this way. So that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Should we, you want to talk more about movies? <laughs> <laughs> My hand's bad because of the moped accident. <laughs> you can't just hit, you can't do the hand and the, what is that? Is that a conch? What is that? It's a, it's a horn from a broken Viking helmet. <laughs> Was that what you were you were going to wear, but then you decided to wear the Christmas hat, or you were always going to wear the Christmas hat? No, I was always going to wear this, yeah. <laughs> what is fall? When you think about fall, you think about the ideas of, of, uh, of, of life, and your year is coming closer to an end. Mm -hmm. have you, did you have any New Year's resolution? Because that's what I've been, I've been fascinated by this lately. Like, the idea of, I had these plans in January of what my life would look like in September. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you this, um, not, not what I expected. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean. It's tough to follow through on goals. You know? Well, like, what kind of goals did you have, Gil? I had a goal to be more social this year, and I wanted to join a social sports Boston uh, bowling league. And I, and I actually did, I achieved that goal. Well, good for you. Yeah, but then I was uh, I was kicked out after two games because I I broke an arcade game at the, at the bowling alley. I was frustrated about. I was frustrated because this guy didn't bowl the right way, and so I got pissed off. You know, you can't get a refund 
on the league dues if you get expelled. <laughs> and another one of my goals was to be uh, better with finances, and so I was out 350 bucks. Whoa. And I had to give the shirt back. <laughs> they, give you, they make you give away the shirt? Yeah. You get a shirt when you join the league, and they said I had to give it back. Oh, my God. That is awful. What game did you break? What Mr. arcade Mrs. Game? Pac-Man? <laughs> you broke Mrs. Pac-Man? Mm -hmm. I, put, I put peanut butter in the coin slot, and I kicked it a bunch of times. <laughs> I was going to say, I think it's very weird that that was how you decided to let go of your anger, was to just put peanut butter in an arcade game. It's, yeah, it was premeditated, definitely. <laughs> Well, have you heard about have you heard about the guy who broke into the White House? I think so. They caught a guy, yeah, and they said they were going to start rethinking their security plan. <laughs> yeah, what? St st you don't have to act quizzical about it. You could have just told me you weren't sure. I have severe ADHD and uh, dyslexia, so I don't, I don't, I try to read the newspaper, but it doesn't always happen for me. <laughs> I start articles and I don't finish them. Usually on the toilet. Right, well, I'm sorry about that me. last part, Sam. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to apologize to me either. Okay, all right. Well, we have uh, we have uh, some footage of, of this guy uh -huh. at the White House. Can we can we air uh, some of the footage of the, uh, the guy at the White House? All right. So this is the guy. Man, you can stay where you are. Stay where you are. You're perfect where you are. Everybody, give a round of applause for Bale Air. Oh, yeah. Let's play this guy. It's everybody out right now. Go back. Everybody into the park. Right now, into the park. Right now, into the park. Everybody back. Everybody back. Everybody back. Everybody back in the park. Everybody back in the park. Everybody out right now. Go back. Everybody into the park. Right now, into the park. Buddy, he, he, he jumped over a fence at the White House and he tried to run into the door. Everybody back to the park. He doesn't need back to the park. He, the door. he gets stopped. Now, uh, that, that was the guy running. But we here at So That Happened, no other talk show on the face of this earth has some other video footage that no one else has seen. So, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to our breaking news correspondent, Hillary Hidalgo! Hillary Hidalgo! <laughs> hey, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for having me. This is a fantastic night. And, uh, so that happens. I, this is, this is, this is history. We've never had any news. So this is great that we've had breaking news. As your breaking news correspondent, I have been bored off my ass. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, haven't done shit all I know, year. I know, this is, this is broken, my job's wide open, so. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> so happy that, yeah. All right, so let me get this straight. What you have is video, uh, video, video of this man before he broke into the White House, right? Yes, now I would like to point out, so Omar Jose Gonzalez is, um, as of right now, still just an alleged perpetrator. Right. He, he isn't going into hearing until next week. Okay. But what we were able to do was we were able to circumvent the security of the security cameras in his apartment building, and we were able to break in and see footage of him and his day-to-day -day life, which oh. is fascinating. And wow. And, and prosecutors and the White House staff is ecstatic that we have this footage. Okay. It gives a whole new way of thinking in, into this man's mind. Absolutely. I, I would love to see how this guy thought of this idea. All right. So let's let's just air the first clip. Can we air the first clip of this guy? As you can see, this is outside of Mr. Gonzalez's home. And um, not even phased. He wasn't even phased when I passed him It shows that he already has a degree of psychopathy where the world around him has no bearing on his day-to-day -day life. He is staying his course and going right to where he desires. It's amazing. Yep, that sounds like a person. Yep. <laughs> that sounds a lot like a person. All right, all right, you know what? So, and, I, and, I, and from what I hear, you have, you have even more. Oh, we have, we have so many more things. Just about his, about his world, you know? Yeah. Getting into his head a little bit and his day-to-day -day life. It's fascinating. Let's, uh, all let's, right. let's roll the next clip. Roll the next clip. a little bit more evocative. <laughs> Of, of who Mr. Gonzalez really is. Okay. I believe you'll see inside his home. You see, this is his hallway. Long, narrow, very... He 
have all the pictures, the last one is just slightly askew. Gives an idea, a little bit of an idea into the mind of this man. <laughs> this week. Running backs like the beat kids. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the stuff that's going on with the NFL and every other sport's been going on for years. Just so one guy gets caught doing something, now they're blowing it all out of proportion. I don't know how, I don't know where the comedy is going to be in this. It's all pretty sad. Uh... It can just be in our discomfort. So if you had a fantasy football team, for example, would you draft Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, or Reggie Bush? Oh, um, 
The latter. The last one? Yeah. Reggie Bush? He definitely beats his son. You should know that. Do you think uh, Roger Goodell should uh, be forced to resign? Well, he has to keep his job. Um, you know, he has to pay the bills. And I heard he makes $40 million a year, so I, I don't think he needs to keep the job. That's, that's a lot of money. I'm not happy with Goodell, and I'm not happy with his handling of issues without all of the facts and doing it appropriately. Um, I think he's reactionary. Do you think that he's trying to cover his own ass? Most definitely. Most definitely. So now you have Adrian Peterson or Reggie Boy or Ray Rice. Those are your cho two choices. Go. The first one. Adrian Peterson also beats his son. That's what's been going on for years. They've just been covering it up. So now they can't cover it up no more. Now it's a big thing. It's unfortunate, but I think like the NFL thinks that they can just get away with what, whatever they want. What do you think the NFL can get away with? Well, according to NPR, the UPSN on NPR, he should be criticized for what he's doing. They did say it was all about money. Yeah, all the way, man. Screw that guy. I hate him. Mm -hmm. Just because he makes all that money. Fuck the kids. Just the money. <laughs> do you think uh, if a bunch of football players, like, performed a heist, like, in a casino bank, do you think they could get away with it? Um, nah, they're not sneaky enough. Yeah, it's true. They got the big pads and everything like that. So even if he were just a rich man who'd done nothing wrong, you think he should just... just the money. You know, people hate, I mean, kids. I'm African-American. My, mo my mother did the same thing, so I'm a little desensitized for, you know, making that judgment. Your mother was a football sports commissioner? Okay, ready? You only have one more choice. Who's it going to be? The, the only one left. Ray Rice? He's a great guy. Don't worry. He's never done anything wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Sam, I was getting a sandwich. <laughs> Where's the sandwich? A, a seagull swooped in and took it out of my hands. <laughs> it's just my luck, a seagull. You never left the building. There was one in the building. Someone let a big bird in here. What kind of person would let a bird just walk into an improv theater? I don't know. A staff member that wasn't paying attention. How is a staff member not going to notice one bird walking through here? I don't know. Or flying through here. I don't know. Maybe they were playing Squish Candy or whatever that game is on their phone. <laughs> what is Squish? Elaborate on what Squish Candy is. Well, it's that app where the candy comes down and you try to squish it with a big, uh, a big hammer, right? Yeah. See? Yeah, I see. <laughs> one guy. One guy. Sam, if you around. like crime stuff, you should see that show about the high school science teacher that uh, makes and sells meth. Are you talking about Breaking Bad? I'm pretty sure that's what that show. It's that the one where he goes, I knock knock. And then he knocks on that guy, right? And then he's th then he's in charge. Right? And he's in charge of the of the town. You gotta get your TV back. Yeah. You gotta okay. get your <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys. Are you ready for our first cast of the night? Alright. Alright, All right, guys. Tonight, I'm so happy that we got her here. I'm so excited to have her here. Uh, she, she's a forward for the Boston Breakers. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Katie Shepard! <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out here. Thank you. Oh, uh, so, uh, Katie, uh, uh, well, thank you uh, for coming out here. I'm happy that uh, you're here. You, you're taking the, the busy time out of the Boston Breakers schedule to come down here. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. It's Great to be here. Have you ever been to like a guest on a show before? Uh, like no, this? Not once in my life. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> it's never happened to me either. All right, so you play uh, you play soccer professionally. I do. And you've done this pretty much your whole life, right? Played soccer, yeah, not the professional part, but just uh, played <laughs> soccer my whole life. Katie, I, I, you've seen the show. I've never been a professional ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what, I, uh, what I wanted to ask was, all right, you've played soccer your whole life. Mm -hmm. How many orange slices do you think you've eaten? <laughs> <You're sorry. laughs> it's funny because I've never really been the biggest fan of orange slices. I was more in it for the Gatorade, the free Gatorade. Yeah, <laughs> orange slices. All right, what color, what flavor Gatorade? Red. Red? Yeah, red and purple. Yeah. You mean like grape and fruit punch? No, red and purple. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to have um, 
I, I had a cousin who always who always thought he never made the connection that orange, like an orange flavor drink, was orange flavor. Like he always thought it was just the color. The color orange. Yeah, and I always thought that was a strange way to like look at drinks is in their color. I feel like it's only with Gatorade though that you can say specifically the color and everyone knows you're just talking about. You say you like the light blue Gatorade. Everyone knows it's the light blue Gatorade. No one actually knows yeah, the full what, name of it. What is the flavor of the light blue Gatorade? I don't know. I know it's light blue and I know it's not the best but it comes in the powdered packages and we get it a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so never powdered? No. Always Gatorade. Yeah, right? Yeah. Who needs that in their life? No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you're from Connecticut, right? Yep. And so that must be nice that you're kinda of playing for the like the hometown team. Yeah. Right? Uh both my parents went to BU so it was pretty uh nice to just be home and they love coming and visiting and being around that's, Boston and everything. Oh that's amazing. Are your parents like the passionate kind? Do they get like crazy uh, about my dad does my dad is the you need to pass to katie during it's gotten to a point where my mom will not sit next to my dad and my dad goes to whatever end of the field we're shooting on so when we're in that area he can just scream to everyone to pass to me and my mom will kind of <laughs> stay more my mom stays the more neutral side and just doesn't say a word but my dad will switch during the game whatever side we're shooting on and just scream to pass to me <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's so much better than my parents my parents won't see me <laughs> here at the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. They're, they're like, you know what? Uh, I'm happy you're doing this. <laughs> yeah, I have a cousin who's from Connecticut, and she's from Boston, and she's always been like, "Oh, this is so cool! Like, I love being in college." And I mean, college, the college game is a lot less popular, so you can hear everything that the fans are saying. So there's only a pa our parents are in the stands, and that's pretty much it. And I have a very specific memory of playing, and it was a pretty important game, and it was getting down to the end of it, and my dad didn't think I was getting the ball enough. And the only voice you could hear in the entire stadium was my dad screaming to pass the ball to me. And I was beyond embarrassed after the game. I had to tell him that he wasn't allowed to talk anymore, and it was this big blow up. And him and my mom had an eight-hour car ride home to talk about it, and my mom yelled at him the whole time. Well, let me ask you this. Did you get the ball? Oh, I scored the game winning goal. Yeah. <laughs> I played as a youth, and I ne and I never scored a goal, and it was it got it was hard. I felt like it was like a thing that I, you know what I mean. After a few seasons, I was like the guy that had never scored a goal, so it was embarrassing. <laughs> well, do you know what, Gil? I think it's a great game. I really enjoyed the World Cup. I do love the game, and I really like uh, I really like going out to the Boston Breakers uh, games. You guys play at Harvard at the Harvard Stadium. Yeah, right? the big Coliseum. Yeah, Coliseum. right down the street. Yeah. That must be really awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, it, we've I've played there. I played for the big Breakers for a few years now, and so um, definitely after the World Cup, there's been some big pushes of attendance, yeah. and it's pretty cool to have that many people get in there and come watch us play. Oh, and congratulations! You signed. You 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 re-signed. You yeah, you're here till yeah, you're here till next season. Yeah. yeah. Time, a great time uh, to mention that the Boston Breakers have a, a lot of great ticket offers, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> they do. Uh, I mean, if, if someone wanted to, they could get uh, they could they could buy a package. You get 10, 10 home game tickets, and they could also see a playoff game. They could get mentioned in the website uh, in the on the website, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you personally will high five them. Uh, yeah. If they do. Uh, <laughs> you come and tell me that you came for this show. I'll come and give you a high five. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Katie's gonna be here all night because she's gonna have to do this now. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. Uh, so let's talk about Waterford, uh, Connecticut. Right? right. That's where you're from, right? Yes. And Waterford. that's where you, and that's where you started. Uh, that's where you started playing. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um. Did you always play for it? Uh, yeah, I just kind of was thrown out there, and unlike you over there, I just started scoring goals. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, so I just came to the <laughs> Now, uh, do when you first start out, do you do you be does that happen often? Do you become a forward and you're always a forward, or does um, it? Actually, 
actually my entire career I've had coaches tell me that I would have to move. I'm not really the fastest person in the world. Sam, I thought maybe instead of orange slices, we could have maybe apples that they're mish Oh, okay. Hey, Cracker. I uh, uh, wasn't expecting her to be here. Huh? I do you know? Do you? Is there a game tonight? Or? Do you know? Do you, do you know each other? Yes, Katie and I go way back. <laughs> so, Geiger. Geiger's the name. You don't. God, wait, your name's Geiger? Yes, my name is Guy. You, you don't remember? You don't remember me? It doesn't ring a bell, huh? I did, all referees look alike. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> I refereed a game of yours about four years ago. I was a referee's assistant. A referee's assistant? Do they, they have that in soccer? Watch it, Sam. Watch it, okay? It's a warning. It's a warning. It's a, okay? It's called a linesman. I assist the referee. Okay? Okay. Huh? Sure. I remember, remember what it was like it was yesterday. Does it ring a bell yet, Katie? <laughs> huh? Sorry. No? Huh? It was a Sunday morning game. I know it was the morning because my wife and I planned to go apple picking after the game. <laughs> yeah? And your center mid sent you in on a beautiful through ball. And you chipped the goalie. And it went in. <laughs> but you were off sides. <laughs> and I called it. <laughs> I called the offsides. Because you were so offsides. <laughs> she was. She was so offsides. And you looked at me. Do you remember this now? You remember? You go, you go, Ethan's on. And I know that, Katie. Because <laughs> I'm a good referee's assistant. <laughs> but you weren't even. You were off. <laughs> okay? So that's why I called it. And then what happened next, I'll never forget for the rest of my life. I'll never forget this. You looked at me and I'm, I'm a statue. Because that's what I'm supposed to do to indicate the place where you went off sides. And you looked at me and you go, I'll never forget this. You go. <laughs> Who does that? I have never. Never been so disrespected in my life. Cause you're just like, get out. <laughs> like I'm nothing. Like, uh, like, what? What's, what? <laughs> Disregarding me, like, uh, uh, and I couldn't move because I didn't place the ball yet, and it hurt my feelings, Katie. You didn't think about that? Just wait, guy. Like I'm nothing, man. Guy, I have a family. Oh. I have a wife and a dog and two cats and I have to go home and I have to look at them and I have to and I have to just like how was your day guy? Didn't you know, so disrespected? Do your kids call you guy? I don't have kids, I have a dog, my dog doesn't talk, Katie. But yes, my wife does call me guy. I don't care. And you know what? I still went apple picking after the game. You know, you have to stop that. You have to stop that from happening in my life. <laughs> but have you ever been apple picking, Katie? Yeah, I have. Have you, have you, been, have you been, ever been apple picking when you, when, you, when, you're not, when you don't feel good about yourself? <laughs> yeah, well, it's different. All right, well, Tiger, don't, don't you think you're, at, you're overreacting a little bit? Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Sam, here. Everyone back away. Everyone get Sam here. Katie, stay right here. Back away, everyone. You here. Ike, here. Katie, you stay. Okay? Right here. Cut. Back off, everyone. Ike, here. Stay. Go. I don't want to hear it. I don't want it. Here. Come on. Right here. Stay, Katie. Ike, here. Katie, stay. Come on. No, no, I, I warned you, I warned you, I consider this an official caution. You've been cautioned, I've cautioned you now. What? You've been cautioned. Cautioned? Yes, you've been cautioned. You can't caution me. Wait, turn around, turn around, what's your number?
turn around. I, you've been cautioned. I've cautioned you, okay? You're in your last leg. You've been cautioned. You've been warned. And you've been cautioned. What's the difference? Yes, what? Because a caution is different than a warning. A caution. How is that any huh? different? It sounds like you a get, warning. You get lots of warnings. You get one caution. How do you only get one what? caution and you get multiple okay. warnings? Okay. Uh, I hit that. Whoa, wait. Hey, 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 sit. What the hell? That's the sit, sir. Hey, wait. Sir, wait. Go. Go. What? Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? Straight to red. Straight to red. Wait. Huh? You can't be kicking out audience uh, members. You're everyone's out. Hey, I'm a giant. Guy. I'm Geiger. Guy. I'm Geiger. I'm in control. I have this. Uh, I want you to win. All of you. Let's get it. Technical Institute. Technical Institute. That's what it's called? It's a, college, it's a college for people interested in learning how to repair uh, keyboards, like piano keyboards. And stuff. It's a six year program, so I can't. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. All right. But now you're here, you're at the Boston Breakers, you're from Connecticut, you're a New England girl. I'm, I, I'm assuming that you got to be just as sad as that. Uh, as we are that the Red Sox are not in the playoffs, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm more sad that Derek Jeter is retiring than that the Red Sox are not in the playoffs. I'm a big Yankees fan. <laughs> Alright, where's that red card? <laughs> <laughs> I see you're, you're a giant uh, Yankees fan. Yeah, okay. Yankees fan. Have you seen uh, Jeter on the farewell uh, thing yet? Um, Have you had a chance? I haven't. I think I get a little teary-eyed every time I have to see the farewell thing. I was watching a little bit of his last game before I came, and I, just, I couldn't do it anymore. I had to turn it off. Now, now that's what I always wonder with other athletes. How much of other sports are, are you invested in? Because I always find that interesting, like, the idea of, like, you play this, and you're so passionate, you're passionate mm -hmm. about sports. And soccer is your day-to-day, -day, like, all the time. Do you, can you still have that ability to be, um, Passionate, distraught, and upset, or elated when uh, some, uh, another team completely out of your league, uh, in a different league, or, or, or a different sport, uh, uh, does well or does bad? Like, yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. It's nice to take a break away from soccer once in a while and watch something else and watch other people, appreciate other people doing their craft and watching them do their thing. And um, it's cool because obviously they get. Um, a lot more notoriety, and you get to watch them be these big celebrities, so it's kind of cool to watch them do that. Yeah, no, I, I mean, Katie, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, every person that's been on So That Happened, huge celebrity right after. Oh. Me, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, uh, one last question. How do you, what do you do to spend, uh, what, what do you do when you're outside of soccer? Like, what, what do you do to spend, like, your free time with? What do you do? Um, so I get asked that question a lot, going through all the, doing camps and doing talks and things like that. So my New Year's resolution was I was going to start actually doing stuff outside of soccer, okay. um, besides 
watching other sports because that's such a boring answer when these little kids <laughs> ask you and you say, oh, well, I hang out with my friends and I watch more sports. Right, right. So um, by chance, I happened, we, I went to a craft store and I found this paint by numbers thing. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be pretty simple and take, I was thinking, oh, I can do this today. I'm going to see my mom tomorrow, so I'll give it to her as a present. And I opened it up and it ended up being like the hardest month of focusing <laughs> on with these tiny little sh things that I had to fill in with a different paint. You actually have to take out paint and mix them to make a different color and that fills in the letters and it's the most intense paint by number I've ever seen, but I finished it and then I bought another one to start. So I've really been into these paint by numbers in the off season. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, well I, I'm gonna not hold you up and let you get back to your, to your hobby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jay, Jay Jabber, Jay Jabber. Jay Jabber, Jay Jabber. Jay Jabber, Jay Jabber. week. Uh, perhaps the least important of them is the new iPhone. Do uh, you guys get the new iPhone? We pre-ordered. You did pre-order. Well, that's very important that I take back what I said. I'm going there today, unfortunately, to, with my wife. She believes there's not going to be a line there, but I don't believe it for a second. Well, I think one of you will be right. Yes. <laughs> like a whole bunch of apps that really don't really do too much unless you are um, Got that kind of um, stuff. You know too much about that stuff. Well, it's expensive. It's like five hundred dollars. Got that kind of money. Um, some people do, and they're waiting in lines for yes, it. Yes, Roger Goodell, fire that son of a bitch. He has that money. He has a million iPhones. iPhone six. He's getting an iPhone ten too. So I gotta get that too. It's not even out yet. He probably has it. I don't know if those can all fit in his pocket. I heard it's pretty big. Oh, it's a big one. Yeah, it's a bulge. It's about like the big brick that everyone likes. Isn't the, uh, isn't the iPhone 6 going to be a lot bigger? I didn't order that one, but yeah. I didn't get the base, well, I didn't get the plus. We were just talking about that, whether or not I would get a new phone sometime soon. Hers is old as hell. Yeah, it's pretty old. It's pretty janky. That's okay. Could I get uh, a discount at a movie theater? Because um, all this is pinpoint where people are at, um, their business, their home life business, all their business. Okay, so if there was an app that the iPhone 6 had, that the iPhone 5 doesn't have, that you wish there like existed, what app would you want to have for anything? Oh, I don't know. That's so hard. Um, something related to food, probably. Finding food. Yeah. Something food related. Like Yelp. Yeah, but better. Like <laughs> exclusive to the iPhone 6 Yelp. <laughs> like uh, Yelp for only iPhone 6 users. Uh, why? Why would you get the watch but not the iPhone 6? Because you need a phone in general for the watch. So I already have the phone, and if I have the watch, you don't have to show my phone. So people don't have to get jealous. So if somebody's calling me, I just ignore it from my phone. I don't have to go in my pocket, which is better, because, you know, getting the phone is too much work. So I can just go decline from my phone. It's like that movie, Eyes in the Sky. That, Eyes in the Sky, what's up? Yeah, it's about this movie where, they can, where the government and anybody else can pinpoint where you are, what you're doing, what kind of soap you use when you take a bath. If, if the government knows I'm using Irish Spring, that's going to be very embarrassing. Do you, do you ignore a lot of calls? All the time. People always want to call me. I'm a busy guy. <laughs> women? Women and guys. More women, though. I like to think so. At least. <laughs> so you, you have to beat them off with a proverbial stick. Uh, what about the iWatch, a very fancy new watch? What do you think about that? Get Max. Get what? You get Max. Very nice. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think that uh, now is a great time to bring out our musical guests of the evening. Uh, you, you said? <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, our musical guest is a phenomenal performer, and I uh, can't wait for you all to see her. Uh, you can check her music out online at mayohara.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to May O'Hara! <laughs>
Which, if you were to live in Scotland, do you think you would want to have it be its own independent country, or do you want to uh, stay with Britain? No, I stay with Britain. I, I like to go back to Africa. Like to oh. <laughs> yeah, what, if, what if Texas? What Texas seceded from the U.S.? Okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> I like Ian McKellen. He's he's Scottish. Of, he's of Scottish descent. Ian McKellen, is that like the uh, the guy, is like the writer there? Ian, oh no, Ian McKellen, the guy from uh, like Star Trek or whatever, the old guy that everyone likes. Do you think if Canada decides they want to leave the United States, they should be able to vote? Um, whether or not they want to be in the United States anymore? The Canada is not in the United States. <laughs> News to me. He's not in Star Trek, but he is, he's in um, Lord of the Rings and he's in X-Men. Um, there's Patrick Stewart as well. I'm not clear on his yeah, heritage. Yeah, are huge buddies, right? They're like, they're hanging out all the time. Yeah, they feed each other ice cream and so on. All right. Do you think if Boston oh. wanted to become its own independent uh, city, its own country, would you be cool with that? No. Yeah, me neither. No, it's too reckless. <laughs> we wouldn't last long, would we? No, not at all. <laughs> Sam, I was donating money to the Wild Seagull Foundation. <laughs> what? It's a foundation that helps wild seagulls. Like, <laughs> Why would you donate money to them after they just stole your sandwich? Because if they're properly policed, it won't happen to someone else. <laughs> I wrote them a check. You know what? That kind of makes sense. That kind of makes a lot of sense. All right, well, Gil, uh, this part of the show is uh, my favorite part of the show. It's panel. Do you love panel? Yes. Can I be a part of the panel? You're you're here. Okay. So you gotta have to be. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have uh, 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 a little panel game. So please uh, give a warm welcome to our panel guest, Game Possession, uh, Gabe Shepherd, uh, James Lindsay. So, what we're going to do is uh, we have a, uh, I like to play this game, because uh, I'm, I'm uh, just so into uh, crisis. I love reading crisis ads. And so what I have here are a few crisis ads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read these crisis ads, and you, my esteemed panel, 
are going to try and guess what state it came from and why. Okay. <laughs> Sound good? Yeah. All right. The first one, the headline reads, this is a misconnection. It is a woman looking for a male. The uh, headline says, guy from McDonald's. Okay. So, I know this is a long shot, but here it goes. I am looking for the guy I saw at McDonald's. He was looking for someone off of here. He came up to me and asked me if I was the lady from here. But I told him no and gave him an awkward laugh. Truth is, I wanted to lie and say that I was, just so I could get to know him better. If you should see this by some miracle, please say in the title of your message which McDonald's it was and maybe a picture of yourself. Thank you. P.S. My email is, and then she gave her real email. What is it? It is. <laughs> I need that. I need that. Hate it. it <laughs> is uh, kateallen11 at gmail.com. Solid name. <laughs> um, so, we always start from the end and all the way up to here. Uh, Gil Sorenzo, do you have an idea of what state you think this might have been from? Very tough call. I, it's interesting that uh, automatically when I hear someone has a Gmail, I think that they should get a certain amount of respect for that, regardless of how awkward the situation is. I lost my Gmail account because I couldn't, my password was wizard, but after several logins, they shut down my account because they, they thought that someone was trying to hack into it because I kept try typing in wizard and it wouldn't log me in. And then it was only after I lost the Gmail account and had to get a Yahoo account that I remembered that I spelled wizard W-I-Z-Z-Z-A-R-D. And I was typing in W-I-Z-A-R-D. So that's why that didn't work. Your whole story is suspicious. Thank you. My guess is, my guess is Arizona. <laughs> I think that, that was, that's where they, this happened, in Arizona. Kate, how about yourself? I don't agree with him at all. <laughs> I, think you're supposed, I think you're supposed to guess. Oh, you're supposed, supposed to make to a guess. guess independent of Yeah, you're supposed to guess the state. I think New Jersey. New Jersey? Why do you think New Jersey? It's just, it's an awful state. It's <laughs> <laughs> Some of those sentences weren't... Are you from New Jersey? You're making a face. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is awkward as hell. Just tell people you're from Boston. No, now. I don't do that. <laughs> you can start. Okay. I don't have to say when it gets me. Okay. It's <laughs> New Jersey. Uh, Rachel J. Cal California, because she sounds glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Dave Thomas. Uh, I'm going to say Illinois. <laughs> Why Illinois? Uh, my grandmother lives in Illinois, and, uh, <laughs> and she doesn't have many hobbies. Uh, and so she hangs out at McDonald's. And you think your grandmother wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, her name's Lois, but she might be going by a different name. <laughs> No. <laughs> I don't know your grandmother by a guy. I assume that's... She's been single for about eight years now, oh. so... No, but like, is she wanted? Uh, what? Like, is, is she a desirable... No, like... It... <laughs> <laughs> like, do other men want her? Or... So, like, if she's going by an alias, uh, like, by the law... Oh, uh... <laughs> no, probably not. Probably, she'd be in New Jersey if she... <laughs> Thing about New Jersey. <laughs> That's true. I am the best thing about. No, um, okay. So I actually took this very seriously. 
Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. So clearly this person is from a state where like it, there's there's got to be like one McDonald's because otherwise I would have mentioned a, a location. So I narrowed it down to Rhode Island or Delaware. And I go to Delaware because I'm from New Jersey and I know that Delaware is even shittier than New Jersey. Um, I'm from Delaware. <laughs> and it's true, right? <laughs> you made that up. And I went to boarding school there. What boarding school is in Delaware? Delaware Boys Boarding School. <laughs> heard everybody else's explanations. Do you have any idea where you think this is from? Um, I'm going to guess Vermont, just because I wanted to even out the map on the country there. We <laughs> so I went Vermont. Uh, well, it's very funny that you mentioned. Oh, before we do that, audience, do you have any idea where you think this is from? Go out and say. Wyoming. Wyoming? Texas. Connecticut? Texas. Texas? Texas? Puerto Rico. <laughs> Not, well, Katie, it's funny that you mentioned, uh, uh, it's, it's funny that you thought it was uh, Vermont, because I would have assumed you would have uh, maybe have known this. Uh, it's actually uh, from State College, Pennsylvania, where you went to college. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I really do only have one McDonald's, though, so. It's <laughs> Alright, alright, our next one. Uh, this one is uh, at the mall. At the mall. I've got this. <laughs> it is a male looking for a fe uh, a male. Male looking for a male. Uh, he is 29 years old. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I was at the Crystal Mall a little while ago. And I saw you. You walked into the bathroom and you stood right next to me. <laughs> what was this? What are you wearing? What was I wearing? Let me know if it was you. I hope you see this. <laughs> That's all he wrote. That's all he wrote. Uh, male looking for a male, 29 years old, at the mall. Gil Sorenzo, do you have any idea where you think this is from? Another tough call. I can tell you from, I've worked at a mall before. I worked at a sunglasses hut at a, at the, at a mall. And I got fired because I, uh, I, I, a baby wanted to try on a pair of sunglasses and I let it. But I guess you're not supposed to, I guess you're not allowed to do that. So I was terminated. They said that the baby's head is too sensitive for sunglasses. But yet it's not affected by ultraviolet rays, so I don't get how this sounds. Uh, my guess is California. <laughs> Thank you. Keep a second. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I think that's how they talk in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm a mall called the Pistol you gotta, Mall. You got a I would say I would say Nevada or New Jersey, but like the pull to New Jersey is so so much more. <laughs> which, which rage in my heart right now. It's going to be right eventually. New Jersey. I go with New Jersey. Rachel Jane. Um, I'm going to say the Pacific Northwest, uh, like Washington, because it sounds like a fever dream, like something that would happen in <laughs> Twin Peaks, right? Yeah. 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 Like, like we, I don't know where we are or who we are. Like, maybe you're real. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good guess. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Washington, okay. Dig Thomas. I'm from Virginia and the mall there closed, so it's not Virginia. <laughs> well, at least he narrowed it down to 49. Should we come back? I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna guess it was at the Cambridge Side Gallery. I'll say that's <laughs> just Washington, D.C. 
the city where no one understands that you can't like touch everyone when you're entering or exiting a bathroom or a, a metro station. Right. So, huh. Like they all constantly like you're harassing you when you're trying to exit. So it's got to be a mall like the Crystal City Mall, something like that in Washington D.C. It's like got to be Washington D.C. Okay. Okay. Oh, hey, and it's still open. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh shit. Any idea exactly. where you think this might have been from? Not only do I know the state, but I also know the town that that is, and it is from Waterford, Connecticut. <laughs> She's right! It's a life for Connecticut! Her whole town! <laughs> Alright, we got one last one. Tell me more details about the life quickly. One last one. This one, this one's a long one. Uh, the headline reads, My Love, Rochelle. It is a male looking for a female, 49 years old, and then he wrote in parentheses in where they would write location, specific location, he wrote in parentheses, my heart. <laughs> oh. 30 years ago, dot, 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 my heart felt something it was looking for. It was you. Short, fiery red hair, and those green eyes, bunny teeth, big nose, and beautiful legs. <laughs> I found that all of that was just fine in my I found my some kind of wonderful. <laughs> nice parents that liked me for some odd reason, even though you and I were only 14. Then kind. These kinds of things scared me. Consent? <laughs> you, just wrote, you just wrote consent. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> My life without you is gone in disarray. And I just wanted us to be close, but we've gone far apart. The week before I was going to get married, I just had to know something, so I drove. 500 miles and got you 12 red roses and told you. You said nothing. My heart was broken. <laughs> this is not what I wanted to hear. And then he wrote in, in all caps, CRUSHED. Oh! <laughs> then, for 30 years, it was always on my mind. Good times and bad times. If we meet again, I assume it was God's plan. We found answers to a lot of our quirks in life. Wow, maybe this was never our choice. Maybe we needed to learn about life and love just to see the real thing. You and I as one. Maybe you need to not worry about me. I have found the most wonderful thing in all my life. You. Just the idea of looking into your eyes and telling you I love you and then hearing you say those words right back to me. And then me saying it again. I love you, Rochelle. I am sick of calling you. When can I call you my wife? You know, I have always wanted to ask. And then dot, dot, dot. He writes, do you like that chainsaw I got you for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> dot, 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 in all caps, I love you, exclamation mark. <laughs> Where's Virginia? <laughs> One person already has an idea. <laughs> Yo, Sorenzo. I thought that was so beautiful. And it's, <laughs> I'm part of a support group that meets at the Somerville Public Library. It's a support group for people whose parents were addicted to box wine. And what we do is... <laughs> we meet on Tuesday evenings and we talk about our problems and then we write, we write poems based on stuff that's happened to us. And that reminds me of some of the writing of some of the men in the group. I thought it was really well done. And it was interesting that he threw in the chainsaw bit at the very end. I think he's an educated person who lives in Alaska. So I'm going to go with Alaska. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Alaska, because that's what Kate 
session is from. People session. Well, By the way. I, I, no disrespect to Alaska whatsoever. If I was legally allowed to drive a car, I would go there. <laughs> Do you know how long of a ride that would be to drive to I, would, I definitely wouldn't fly there because you miss out on all the beauty along the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, Which is what my parents missed out on because they were addicted to box wine. God damn it. Alaska. Alaska's my answer. Cake possession. I mean, I really, I just really want to go with New Jersey. But, but I got to say, I got to say, Alaska, the legal marrying off age is 16. So, and chainsaws? I mean, how else are you gonna kill your neighbor? So, <laughs> I think Alaska had New Jersey beat on this one. I'm gonna go with Alaska also, Great. So yeah. All right, Rachel Jane. I'm gonna say California again, <laughs> because I think that this could only take place in the city of dreams. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a point. Dave Thomas. Uh, I'm thinking it's somewhere with a great English program. Um, so no, know where I've lived. I, I believe that was a haiku. Uh, <laughs> the whole thing was a haiku. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Arkansas. Yeah. Arkansas, okay. All right. They have trees there, too. <laughs> I just want to say, for the record, that was an incredibly terrifying Craigslist post. Yeah. <laughs> I just want someone to be on the opposite opinion of that. <laughs> you were terrified by uh, it? In many parts, I hoped I could leave the stage and get a blanket to put around myself. <laughs> <laughs> the part that stood out for me was the consent part. <laughs> Who puts that in the middle of That's the weird thing. Consent. It doesn't have any sentence to it. It's just the word. Consent. Yeah. <laughs> well, the scariest part is what you the way you said it, it's not like I had a question mark, so he was like, it's consent. No, no, it's I, don't, I don't think he's asking any questions in that Craigslist yeah. post. Those are all just statements about his life. Um, but I'm going to have to go with New Hampshire. Because, like, that is one how I see people. No offense. How I see people from New Hampshire speaking. And two, they use chainsaws there. And three, they are a, like a state where consent is necessary. Live free. Or die, die hard. hard. Yeah, die hard. That is it. Live for die hard. What were you going to say? I was going to say their state motto, but I prefer that. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, what do you think? Um, I'm going to say Texas, just because I can say Texas. So. <laughs> Texas it is. Okay. The chainsaw? You know, chainsaw. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, Mayo Hair, do you have any idea where yeah. you think this came from? I agree with Alaska. <laughs> yes. I, I think I'm right. Yes. Audience, anybody? Texas. West Virginia. A lot of Alaska. 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 I guess Texas Virginia. every time. Oh, man. <laughs> Utah. Clint and Matt. This. Clint This Texas ad. My heart. Yes. I love you, Rochelle. It came from Oklahoma City oh. in Oklahoma. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this is wow. bad, so that happened. Please give a warm welcome to Mayo Hera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Christ divorced, so I'm trying to be more social and try to get